saves, Jesus saved. I hope he saved you today, but if not, you can take care of that before you leave this morning. Let's all stand together. We're going to sing about what he's done for us, the Christ the Solid Rock in song 394. On Christ the Solid Rock, I stand all other ground is sinking sand. My hope is on to do something and I want to have that choir one more time sing that choir special. I know it'll take a few extra minutes but I just was standing back there in the back and that phrase it is done will shout the cross. 
You know, churches like ours have been proclaiming the message Jesus saves for years and years, well, ever since our inception and long before this church came around. But then somebody wrote this song some time ago, and choir did such a wonderful, wonderful job. Thank you for that. I'm going to ask Daniel to lead you in it one more time. If you're joining us via live stream, thank you. If you're on the radio, this is Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. We give those announcements to get out of the way. But listen to this choir singing. Watch the words up here as you see it, and think about the wonderful, wonderful message of Jesus saves. Thank you, choir. Amen. What a blessing. Thank you for singing. Thank you for the message in that song. And what a joy. Welcome to church this morning. We're glad that you are here, each of you, however you've joined us. And if you're a guest with us today, there's a connect card in front of you. If you didn't care sometime to fill that out and drop it by guest services, that's the counter out in the lobby. And after the service, they would have a gift for you. And it's clearly marked there to your left as you leave. But that, drop that off if, you're, if you'd be so kind. We appreciate it. Have a record of your visit. We'll drop you a note this week. 
But we're just glad that you're here. We're looking forward to a great time. I'm going to pray. And then it's our graduate Sunday. We're going to honor some graduates and recognize them. But before we do that, we want to pray and ask the Lord's blessings on the service, but then also give you a couple of requests. Why don't you be praying for Miss Allison Edwards, if you would please. Her father passed away, Alan uh, England, and uh, he was a believer, knew the Lord, is now with him. So please pray for, though, for this family, if you would. And we're praying also, though, for... Brother Bob Daniels, he's waiting on a few tests and things. And Miss Sheila Daniels having health issues as well. So, Brother Bob back there, please keep Sheila and he both in your prayers. And uh, then we're praying for Miss Leslie Farmer. She goes for an appointment tomorrow with a thoracic surgeon. Please keep her lifted up in prayer. And very important uh, appointment. And uh, then we're praying for Brother David Harrison. Not here this morning, but uh, Lord willing, be back with us next week. And so please keep him lifted up in prayer. Jeff Simpson was in the hospital, but is back home. And we're thankful for that. And uh, many folks had asked me about Miss Judy Whitson. And I want you to please keep her lifted up in prayer. We were able to spend some time there with her yesterday. Amy and I were. And so uh, she is, she was acting, she was feeling good. She was a pleasant, uh, pleasant visit we had, but uh, please just keep her lift up in prayer. Hospice is in there and uh, helping out in, in ways that they do. And so we're grateful for that, but please keep her in your prayers. The Lord will just give grace and strength and um, through this, through this uh, part of life. And uh, we're just lifting her up in prayer. She's a great blessing to our church. So those are some of the requests as we go to prayer, we're going to lift up and then we're praying, ask the Lord's blessings on what goes on here as well. Father, we are grateful that you've let us join together today. Lord, we do pray for you. Bless Miss Judy over at the house and be with her, Lord, as she's watching now. And Lord, thank you for her. I pray that you bless Brother Jeff Simpson. Uh, Lord, Brother David Harrison, not with us either. I pray that you strengthen him. Miss Leslie, as she goes to that appointment tomorrow, Brother Bob, Miss Sheila. Lord, just please uh, continue to bless them. And then we pray for uh, Miss Allison Edwards and her family and the passing of her dad. I pray that you would just uh, comfort and give grace to this family, we ask. And we'll certainly praise your name. Thank you for uh, your, your ability. Lord, pray for Miss Sharon Harmon that you would strengthen her as she's watching today as well. I pray that you would just bless these good and wonderful folks of our church. And uh, Lord, you'd be all to them that they need, we pray. And we'll thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's a special time. Brother Kyle and I are going to give a few um, awards away or awards, a few gifts rather from our church. And Brother Daniel is going to come and honor some folks. If you've got an insert in your bullets and you can pull that out and follow along if you like. But he's going to come and I'll join Brother Kyle down here on the floor. Well, as our, as our high school graduates come, if they're wherever they are throughout the, the uh, auditorium, maybe up in the choir or elsewhere, you can come down to this front pew. But as they come, uh, we've got many listed in the bulletin today that are graduating from uh, college. And uh, we'll wanna, before we uh, get to our high school graduates, want to recognize those. So if you are listed or maybe you didn't get your name in, but you did graduate, but if you're listed or you graduated from a college to, uh, this year, if you don't mind to stand where you are, we want to uh, recognize you first. So I'm not going to say all the names, but if you graduated from college this year, why don't you go and stand right where you are? I know there's some of you in here. You're just not standing right now. So thank you very much for being the first ones. If you graduated uh, this year, we want to thank you for uh, for being in here today. We want to thank you for the work that you put in. We want to recognize you for uh, for all of that work. And uh, there's many others that obviously are uh, here as well listed in the bulletin. If you know some of them, I want to make sure you uh, know who they are and you congratulate them. And let's give those who have graduated from college a round of applause today. And so... A lot of work goes into all of that, as many of you know, and uh, both the families and uh, the, uh, the student themselves, and so they are certainly due for congratulation for all the work that they've done. And then those graduating uh, from high school we want to take some time to recognize them uh, this morning. We've got a gift that Pastor and Brother Kyle are going to present uh, to them, and so we'll read down through the names. You'll see these are down on the bottom right of that insert in your bulletin. And so first, uh, first on the list is from Cedarview Christian uh, Academy, Allie Herdman. And then from Home Life Academy, first up we have Abby Foran. Uh, unable to be with us this morning, we have Mason Wilcox. And then from Home, oh, go ahead, sorry. Then from home school, we have Olivia Pugh. And 
and our intern as well, Braden Bussey. Come on down here, Braden. He likes attention. And unable to be here this well, as well this morning, Heather Santiago. <laughs> From Tri-Cities Christian Academy, Callie Arrowood. <laughs> and also from Tri-Cities Christian, sitting in the back with her grandma, Tabitha Williams. And we'll give one more round of applause for everybody that's done this and it's some that we maybe don't recognize. Amen. Well, we'll move on with the service. And uh, so let's all stand together. We're going to sing song 352 next. One of the great, the great songs, just a reminder about what God has done for us. He touched me shackled by a heavy burden, but he touched me and he made me whole. I did want to make just a couple of announcements while we're thinking about this. Our Discovery Sundays, maybe that's a little new to you, it will begin next Sunday. And there's a sign-up sheet in the back, and I'd love to invite many of you. And this is a three-week class for the starting next Sunday, June 9th. And it will go for three consecutive Sundays. It will start at 9.45 and then go through the Sunday school hour. Brother Bobby Brown and his wife Christy will be facilitating that. And uh, it just gets you more introduced to Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. I'd love for all of you to be more connected if you you, if maybe you've joined recently, you haven't joined yet, or maybe you just feel like you want to know more about how to, well, the history of the church, but then more than that, how you can get involved. Find your spot to serve, because I believe that all of us ought to have a spot somewhere. We ought to have a, a, a thing that we do. You say, I don't know if I can sign up. I'm not talking about a class or anything like that, but just all of us ought to have some, and you get to know the church better. So if you can sign up, Amy and I will be back in the lobby. It's on that black table behind where we're at. And then, ladies, there's a craft night on Saturday, uh, June the 15th. There's a sign-up sheet back there as well. I think the cost is $10. It's going to be a special time, ladies, and I think that you would really enjoy it, have a good time. And then one last one, this Tuesday, Brother Daniel is going to facilitate part of it. I'll be in BIMI down Chattanooga for the missions meeting, but uh, the Oasis will be at 1130. 
potluck for uh, all the Oasis 55 plus. She said, I've never been. Come, this will be a great time to come and enjoy it. Um, Brother Nathan Susong will be there, and Brother Troy Lewis, many of them will facilitate different things. It's a great, great time. Come be with them at 1130 in the Family Life Center, and we'll have a great time together. So, then you mind getting your microphone there, Brother Jeff Wheels. Brother Jeff, would you pray and ask the Lord's blessings on our offering? We're thankful for what the Lord does, and then after that, you may be seated. Heavenly Father, we are here because of what Jesus Christ did for us. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you do and the blessings of the day. Ask that you'll bless everyone that's ready to give. Use it, Lord, to continue with the ministry here and abroad. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. She's playing song 315. You can turn there in your hymn book. It's a great thought for us to consider this morning. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. All the sin and all the strife, all the things that we had in our lives, God lifted those from us because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Let's sing that first verse. Days are filled with sorrow.
Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Daniel and ladies, and we appreciate that. It is well with my soul. Wonderful song, wonderful story behind the song. If you want a blessing sometime, you can search that out and see the origins of that. What a wonderful job. Thank you. Well, I wanted to preach for a little while this morning, and um, I want to preach a simple message. It'll be something you might call as just a utility message, something that just gets the job done as far as that, not flashy or anything like that. And maybe a simple message that you'd say, well, we already know that, and you probably will, but there's a need in our land of some normal, basic Bible principles, not even, you know, there's a need for the doctrines of the Word of God, yes, but some common principles that are found in the scriptures that teach us how to live and so I trust there'll be a blessing to you I spoke to some of your kids I went uh, at the end of Sunday school I went up and so some first graders and second graders I told them I said, well this is what I'm going to preach to your parents down there and I said so you ask mom and dad so Josh if Emmett uh, if he's you ask him what he learned and he'll say I don't know I don't know <laughs> um, so I saw the wool kings if you talk to your daughter she was up there and so um, but uh, the teachers had me come in and just say a few things. They sang some songs for me, did a great job. You know, it's a blessing that uh, many of the churches around where I grew up, all the only thing that happened was happened in the auditorium. There was no young people anywhere. There was no kids. There was no, um, there, there was no youth ministry. There was no children's ministry just because they, not that they wouldn't have had it, they'd, if, if, not that they wouldn't have helped them if they'd come, but there just wasn't any. So I'm thankful for the way the Lord has blessed our church and puts these young people in and you bring your families. And uh, may we see this generation grow up and learn some of the things I want to teach you about today, just simple words from the Bible. I want you to look in Psalm 15, if you would. Psalms, largest book in the Old Testament, largest book in the Bible for that matter, but uh, Psalm 15. And when I preach, God asks a question, then answers it for all of us, so we can see that. Psalm 15, as you find your place there, I did hear this story, though, about this couple, and they were celebrating, I think it was the 50th or 60th anniversary, something, I don't remember, but it was a, an old one. Uh, they'd been married a long time, and they'd known in the community for just having domestic tranquility, everything was good, and they just were the talk of the town, really. And so at this celebration, they had one of their local newspapers was there just doing a little, uh, a little report on it. And they want to know, well, what do you attribute this longevity? How do you attribute staying together for these decades? And the husband, he spoke up, said, well, that's, that's easy. 
And the, the, the wife, she was going to look at him and say, oh, really, what? He said, oh, yeah, here it is. And then she's ready for this truth to be laid down. He said, it goes back to our honeymoon. And he says, we went out west. We were going to the Grand Canyon. And so we decided to go those tours, how you go down on those donkeys in the, into the Grand Canyon. And so we went down there and we started. And I was on this one little donkey and my wife was on the other one. So they took us down through there and said that donkey uh, stumbled a little bit and kind of jostled around up on the top of that, up, up on his back. And she looked at him and she said, that's once. And so we went on, and I didn't know what that was about, went on a little bit, and he stumbled again and kind of messed her up and, and almost fell off, and she was mad by that point. She said, that's twice, and said, so went on down, almost got the bottom, and he tripped up on one little rock there the third time, and she looked at him, she said, that's the third time, and she pulled a revolver out of her backpack, and she just shot him in the head. I thought, oh my goodness, that's horrible. What kind of monster have I married? And she, he said, I'm having all these thoughts, and I finally said, honey, I don't think that we should act like that. That's kind of ugly. And about that time, she said, that's once. <laughs> so he said, we've lived a long, peaceful life since then. So, so we look at Psalm 15. God asks this, or the psalmist is used of God, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? That holy hill, the Zion's hill in the land of Israel uh, toward the end in the millennial kingdom, Lord, as, as the Old Testament saints looked, not knowing everything that we do, of course, but knowing that God would set up his kingdom. Who will dwell in thy holy hill? Verse number one, we might act it, ask it like this, Lord, who's right with you? Who are you shining on? Who's the ones that are living in such a way that you're pleased with? He says, who shall dwell in thy tabernacle or dwell in thy holy hill? And then God answers it back. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue nor doeth evil to his neighbor nor taketh up a reproach against his brother or his, against his neighbor in whose eyes a vile person is contemned but he honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. I want to preach on this for just a few minutes. Who shall abide? Or as I mentioned, who's right with you, Lord? That'd be another way we might ask it. Lord, who, do you, who are you shining on? Who's living in such a way that you're pleased with how they live? Who shall abide? Father, bless us now as our prayer. In Jesus' name, we ask you to meet with us. Amen. So I'm burdened about the lack of character that we have in all the people that we live around. I'm blessed. I have on our uh, one side of us, I have Margie Hale, who's here, and she's a, she's a neighbor and a good neighbor. I don't ever have to worry about her. She's never stole anything from our house. And uh, and uh, or anything and then two doors down the other way the Englands they're good neighbors and we've got other good neighbors down our street one's a preacher at a church here in town and others uh, our brother Tim Woods brother we've got a great street we got a good group and the people in front of us very kind but I was thinking about this it was common in our nation to have the vast majority of people who you wouldn't mind having next door to you and your doors always staying open it's been recent years, and my dad started locking the door, and uh, we just always, the stuff has been there, and it's always been safe. It's not been too long ago since our nation, you could just have pretty well anyone there, and you were feeling safe, but you understand that there's a lot of changes that, going, uh, that are going on, have been going on, and I want to preach about a few things that when we were in a nation, even those folks that didn't revere God and lift Him up, they still, there was so much Christian emphasis in our nation that people still treated people in a Christian manner, even though they themselves might not have been saved, born again. But we once again need people, men, women, that would just take some fine, simple Bible character and put it in to our life. I want to give you a few of them today right from this psalm. Number one, in verse number two and three, I'm looking at this as God says, who's right with you? Who's right with you? Or who's going to dwell on thy holy hill? I would say this, number one, from verse two and three, one that speaks the truth. He that walketh uprightly, verse number two, at the end of the verse, and speaketh the truth in his heart. There's a p person or a group, and they're only as good as their word is. 
They're only as good as what they say. You know, there was a time when most people would have, if they'd said they were going to do something, they would have done it. They would have been there if they could have, if, if they weren't providentially hindered. And now we understand that there's, you, you take people, if you've had uh, work done at your house sometimes, maybe somebody will say, I'll be there. And not only are they not there when they say, you've got to call them three times before they ever will come there and, and they won't agree or won't uh, perform that agreement that they made. We do live in a nation of laws and those laws will be carried out with truth and justice. But you understand that we're crumbling from the bottom because we don't seem to count it as important as telling the truth. The Word of God, the Bible says in John chapter 17, is truth. Sanctify them, dear God, through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. We're past Mother's Day. We're not quite to Father's Day, but both of those entities need to be teaching and training their children and their grandchildren to be those people who walk in truth. Because if a person doesn't have his word, what good is he? If the only thing you're dependable on is that you're into undependable, that's not a good spot to be living in. We ought to be able to depend on the words that you say and that I say. I'm thinking about this. When your wife or somebody answers the phone and you can tell by what their face expression is or what they're mouthing to you that the person on the other side is asking if you're there. When you tell them, tell them I'm not here. <laughs> you know what you're doing? We are tell that teaching our children, whoever are watching us, that it's okay to lie when it's convenient for me. Now, if you don't want to talk to them, tell them, I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> Just be blunt, rude, whatever you want to do. That's better than lying. And what we're doing is when our young daughters or our young sons hear that and they see that modeled in front of them, all we're teaching them to do is when you call them on their cell phone and you ask them, hey, where are you at? All you're doing is teaching them to say something different than where they really are. They're saying what you want to hear, not what's truly going on. My friend, sometimes we don't have to look too far to find out why our children or our grandchildren aren't behaving like we want them to. All they're doing is mimicking what they watched us do. And so the Scripture says that person who speaketh the truth in his heart, we need a revival in our families of just being truthful with one another. The Bible says not only that, but look on in verse number four, he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. You say, what does that mean, pastor? That means that I said it, I'm going to do it. Even though I wish I hadn't said what I said I'd do. I've watched my dad before buy cattle and he would preemptively uh, make an agreement with somebody he was selling them to and that they wouldn't pay until the next spring or to the fall, whichever way it worked out. And by the time that came, I've heard people tell my dad, Dave, those cattle aren't as healthy as they should have been or one died. And I've seen him pay for unhealthy cattle or a dead one because he'd already said back last fall, they're as good as mine. I'm buying them. They're on your property. I'll pay you in the spring. My friend, that's what the Scripture says means when it says, He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not me. If we have to even eat it, pay for it, feel the hurt, we see that the Bible says in verse 2, He has truth in his heart. But it goes on to say in verse number 3, He that backbiteth not. Backbiteth not, it's not two-faced. He's not slanderous. He's not going to spread things about you. And it would be strange that I even need to preach it, but I see our uh, shape of our world, and you do as well. There's people that just go around talking behind our backs about things that they ought not to be. But if they're going to talk about them, they ought to talk to us to the face about things. And where does that seem to go in our nation? I was picking up some kids on our bus. Our bus driver's up in his seat, and I got off the bus, and I was watching... I was watching for the kids out of one eye, but then I was watching this little dog, not little dog, but dog out of the other eye. I was just kind of keeping out of my peripheral vision. I could see always keeping an eye on him while watching for these kids because he was kind of slinking around. He was quasi-friendly, but I was afraid of him. And uh, for just a second, I lost him out of my peripheral vision. But it didn't take me long to figure out where he was because he slipped around and he bit me. You say, where he bites you at? The most obvious place back there. <laughs> he was really backbiting. <laughs> And you know, in our lives, we don't need people that are going behind our backs, and we don't need to be those people either. My friend, it used to be commonplace for Christians that they understood that we speak with this mouth the things that are true, the righteous, the good, and the godly. If it is an unpleasant subject, we at least do somebody the decency and the courtesy to speak to them. 
instead of speaking about them to other people. And so I'm looking at this. It's one that speaks the truth. The Scripture says, Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Verse number 4 goes on to give me my next point, and that is this. Not only that that speaks the truth, but that also that one that honors the godly, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. We've fallen into spirit bear in our nation when we call evil good and good evil. And you, if for your children and for your grandchildren, may I remind you that you need to be putting forth good heroes in front of them. That's one thing I talked to the young people about during Sunday school. I was talking to um, Abram was up there and Atlee was up there and different young people that you're, the parents are sitting here. And I told him about my pastor he had had when he was a kid. Pastor Norris is, is in his 60s now, but when he was a young person, he'd had a poster on his wall of some sports figure and my father-in-law let that go on until that that figure got in the news for departing from Christianity and departing from things that were good and moral and was living a life that wasn't consistent with what the Bible says he said Mike I had to take that poster down wasn't ungodly. It wasn't that it was a wicked picture. It was there, same one that before he allowed him to have up. But my friend, I'm saying to you that we need to put people in front of our children, in front of our grandchildren, in front of our nieces and nephews, those that honor God, honor the godly, as the Scripture says, but he that that honoreth them that fear the Lord. And so I understand that we need to be those people who hold up somebody. Our young people will go to England this week I would like for you to come back tonight. Kyle's going to give a report about the miraculous way that God has provided. I'll save that for him tonight. But he's going to give a report about what's going on, how you can pray. We'll do that in the evening service. But we've got our young people going over to England, 20 teenagers, and then the adults that are going with them. You know what these young people need? They need the same thing that any generation needs, but they need some heroes to hold up that are godly and righteous and honorable. They need some people. Scott Polly's a favorite evangelist around here. He'll come back with us this August, I think it is. And we need to have these young people say, wow, maybe you can listen to the podcast of that. You can get, you say, wouldn't that be strange if you had a preacher as, a, as an example? Well, remember who you're talking to. No, I don't think so. And it had to be a preacher, but you ought to be picking some character traits out of some of your neighbors and say, see what he did over there? See how he did that even though he didn't have to? And my friends, we ought to be looking for your grandchildren and, and uh, your children and looking for ways to instruct them to model the godliness that you see around them because there's so much of the other. And if you're not careful, every single hero of your children or your grandchildren will be those that defy God, and, and but they can sing. They'll defy God, but they can play ball. They'll defy God, but they can do some ta- use some talent that God gave them, by the way. But they'll, they'll use that, but they'll, their lifestyle is completely uh, opposite opposite of what the Word of God is. And what I'm saying to us is that we ought to hold up to our young people, not in a worshiping sense. We don't worship people, goodness gracious. But we can look and say some grandparents or something, say, look at the way Grandpa did that. He did that because he wanted to be right with the Lord. He didn't do that because anybody was making him. He did that for this reason. So I'm saying this morning, not only should be one that tells the truth, God, who dwells in your holy hill? Who would it be that makes it to Zion's hill? Who is it that dwells in your tabernacle? Those that tell the truth and those that honor the godly. And then the last one's found in verse number five. Also that one that won't take advantage. He put not his own money to usury back in that day. Of course, the Jews were not allowed, the Israelites weren't allowed to uh, make money on the people that needed to borrow it because they were in a bad time and then make interest off of that. That's not talking about your uh, retirement account and your uh, investment accounts. That's talking about taking advantage of the folks that didn't have it at the time. Nor, in the middle of the verse, take the reward against the innocent. God says that person that I'm pleased with is that one that won't take advantage The young, the helpless, the poor ought to be safe around you. And I thank God for a great group of people sitting here in front of me. I believe that we could have somebody's stuff out there in the truck bed out there in the parking lot and you'd go past it and you'd just let it sit right there. They wouldn't have to lock it up. But the Scripture says that that person that God is pleased with is that one that won't take an advantage of somebody. For you old-timers, 
You remember Bonanza, that old TV show. I told you I watched a lot of it when I was sick with COVID the first time and was watching episode after episode. Why, why would you do that? Well, it was back in the day, everybody was locked off. Amy treated me like I had the plague. I guess I did, the COVID plague. And they just uh, opened the door barely and throw some food in there and shut the door on me. We lived in uh, the house over here on Forest. Well, I watched a lot of Bonanza. And so one of the episodes, uh, little Joe was going to get a, uh, one of the boys was going to get a, uh, more money for the cattle somewhere by doing something else instead of giving it to the person that they'd contracted to sell them to, as I recall. And the dad of the family, the patriarch, says, no, we get a fair price per head on the Ponderosa. I mean, we're not going to take advantage of people just because we can. And we live in a day that we're trying to get as much out of everybody as we can. But there is a line, my friend, where you ought to just say that's enough. Dr. David Gibbs, who comes here and speaks occasionally, he said that he had taken money back this one particular instance that uh, someone had bought cattle from his dad, but he paid too much. Not that he paid an erroneous amount or an incorrect amount. He paid the amount the guy thought he paid, but it was more than what David Gibbs' dad thought that he should pay. And so David Gibbs was tasked by his dad to take the money back to that fella. He said, well, you want me to tell him? He said, well, tell him that you paid too much. He said, dad, but he knows how much he paid. And he, he wanted to pay that amount. This is, we didn't cheat him out of anything, dad. This is just what he wanted to pay. And his dad said this. He said, no. That's above the fair line. He said, because this is the amount that that should be going for, and I don't think that's fair to him. And my friend, I have to be honest with you, there's a lot of us that wouldn't worry about the fair line. If somebody will do it, we'd take it. And so as Scripture tells us here, that that person that God shines on is that one that won't take advantage just because we can. It needs to be decided that we're going to do right just because it's right to do right. Because most of the people in this room, the majority of people don't look over your shoulder like when you were a kid to make sure that you do something right. You could get by with so much stuff, but you or I are just going to have to get to a place where we do right because it's right to do right. Dr. Bob Jones, who started the university years ago, he's dead in heaven a long time. I've heard him on audio file tell those young people in the, in the Bob Jones University, in the chapel services, do right. He'd growl at them. He'd tell them, though the stars fall out of God's heaven, do right. Meaning that you do right, not because somebody's there just to tell you or make you, but you do right because there's a God in heaven watching everything we do. So God asked in verse number one or the psalmist to the Lord, Lord, what shall, who shall abide? And then he answers it. God, who's living like you desire him to live? God, who's doing what you be pleased with? Not what we can get by with or some with somebody out in the lobby. We, we need not to mistake God's long-suffering aspect with his okay with doing something. Sometimes we think, well, God led me. No, what we should say is God didn't kill me when I started to do it. God's long-suffering. But God, who are you pleased with? Who shall abide in thy holy hill? Who shall dwell in thy tabernacle? The Scripture lays it out, one that speaks the truth. That's a person living like I want them to. That one that doesn't take advantage because God's got a very tender spot for those who are underprivileged. And I don't think that any of us would do well to be taking advantage of somebody who's in a tough, tough spot. And then that one that lifts up the godly, lifts up that characteristic in somebody's life. So mom, dad... Grandma, Grandpa, are you speaking the truth in love? Are you modeling that before your children? Are you lifting up? You're, you're doing a great job by being here this morning. You're saying, hey, church is important. We're lifting up this aspect. Are you not taking advantage of people? When I started at McDonald's when I was 15, mom and dad signed a work permit and I started and I started making $3.35 an hour because that's what minimum wage was in that day. And I thought I was making so much money. How could I ever spend it? Well, after the first two weeks, I realized how I'd spend it because uh, it all came back to me. But we'd get periodic reviews. And on those performance reviews, you would get raised up maybe a nickel, maybe 10 cents, maybe 15 cents. And 
based on the evaluation that some managers would give you. Well, I'm not going to take this up, and I'm not going to ask you to fill it out, but I guess it could be like a little performance review. How are we doing? Am I speaking the truth? Am I careful about the things that come out of my mouth? Am I honoring the godly? Am I lifting them up? Am I being careful to be kind to people even when I don't have to be? You say, what are you talking about, Pastor? That means that that person that messes up on that order that you did, be it at a restaurant or some other industry, and they did mess up. And you, as far as the world goes, you've got every right to just lace them out. Where would I think the Lord would want me to be? Not to take advantage. So wherever you are, I trust that the Lord has lit some things up in your life. And if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I'm trying to live all those ways. I really am trying to live exactly like you said. I tell you, my friend, that you could live that way every day of your life. And if you're counting on those activities to get you to heaven, you'd still find yourself eternally separated from God in a place called hell, unfortunately. So you may be trying to live those ways. I, I applaud you for that. But if you're here trying to live that way just so you can get to heaven, my friend, you don't have it in you. You can't make it to heaven on anything you do. It all has to be Christ. But if you're here this morning, you say, I've been trying to live that way, but I just still feel like I'm insufficient. Well, my friend, we are. If you're here today, not sure that you're on your way to heaven, you've been trying to clean up, you've been trying to turn over a new leaf, you've been trying to do things better and better and better. My friend, you'll never outrun your past. You'll never get away from it. You'll never get your sins taken care of by your own doing. The only way that comes is when you receive Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. He died on that old rugged cross, buried, rose again in victory for you and for me. And now today, if you've never received His forgiveness for you received Him, I challenge you to do it today. And if you are saved, my friend, this is just a simple message, probably the simplest maybe that I've ever preached here. But it just felt like the Lord would have me bring it to us because we need a revival in those simple, true, ethical, right dealings that we need to have with this world that's out there. Would you bow your heads together with me? Father, thank you for the time to be in your word. Lord, I pray that your word has gotten into us. I don't think I've said anything that these folks didn't already know. But Lord, maybe you just sent me to, maybe we just came today to get reminded that those simple things, the truth, kindness, lifting up and honoring people who deserve it because of their lifestyle and relationship with you, or those simple things, help us, I pray. Help us to enact them and put them into our lives. And Lord, we'll certainly thank you for all that you do. And we'll praise you for it. If you're able to, would you stand together as our ladies play something through? As they begin to play, if God spoke to your heart, I invite you to come. Maybe there's something on your heart that you'd like to have somebody to pray with you about, then I certainly invite you to come do that. Maybe you're here today and you've been trying to live a good life. Well, you're at church. Why else would you be here? But you say, Pastor, I don't think I've ever got that spot where I ask Christ to be my Savior. Would you step out and come? Let one of us take a Bible and show you how you can be sure. Jesus is your Savior. Maybe you need somebody to pray with you this morning. As they play and our heads are bowed and you like to slip out, and we'd certainly provide that. If you're a lady, we just have a lady quietly sit there and pray with you. If there's something you're going through you need some help with, Man, we'd have a man deal with you. Whatever your need is.
speak to your heart. I invite you to come. Whatever the Lord's laid on your heart to do, I, I don't want you to leave before you do business with the Lord. Maybe it's something I haven't even mentioned, but the Lord's leading you. I challenge you to take, take care of business with God. Nothing's trouble for God, you understand, but if the Lord has gone to the trouble, as our saying would be, to move upon your heart, then let's take that as a need to respond. You have to slip out. It's two minutes till 12. We've got one that wants to follow Christ in baptism. I'm going to slip back and take care of that. But if you need to slip out for the bus, need to slip out for something else, please feel free to. Your schedule uh, is fine. But uh, we want to see this one, follow Christ in baptism. Brother Daniel is going to come and lead us in a song. And uh, we'll get done here in just a moment. What a joy to see this uh, follow person follow Christ. Four, and you can take your time to turn there in your hymn books, but 394, they'll put the words up on the screen as well. We'll sing at least this song, maybe another. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fades, His lovely face, higher and from His unchanging grace, in every high and stormy gale, baptism we're certainly thankful when the lord works in the hearts of people as they just take more and more steps in their christian life and we're thankful for that so Corey, in obedience to jesus christ and upon your profession of faith i baptize you my brother in the name of the father son holy ghost buried in baptism raised to walk in newness of life all god's people said amen, amen. Well, it's been a joy to be in church. If you're a guest with us, thank you for being here. If you would take that uh, Connect card that's in front of you, if you haven't done it yet, fill that out. And uh, the folks will be back there at guest services to your left as you leave. They've got a gift for you just for being our guest. I want to thank you, thank you for being here. Do invite you back this evening. You'll hear from Kyle about this youth trip. They're leaving Thursday night. And uh, so we'll give some prayer points of how we can best support them in that way, but then also give exciting news about the finances and whatnot. So thank you for being here. If you'll stand together, I'm going to ask Brother Daniel if you'll dismiss us in prayer, and uh, I'll meet you in the lobby. If you have anything that Amy and I can do for you, we'll greet you back there as quick as I can. Father, thank you so much for the day you've given to us to be in church this morning. We thank you for this one that just got baptized and Lord, just acknowledging his faith in you and his desire to follow you in his life. Lord, we're so grateful for that and those who've come and pray and those, Lord, all of us, our hearts stirred by the message this morning. I pray you'd help us now, Lord, as we go, help us to live it out. Lord, help us to uh, live as you desire for us to live in this world that we're in. And then, Lord, I pray you'd bless us as we come back together tonight. We have a great time together in church. Thank you so much for our church family. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.